Hey, Richard Knudsen here again, and in this short presentation, I want to talk about a particularly useful function of workflows, which is to assign records, and I want to talk in particular about round-robin lead assignment. Now, this presents an interesting challenge, which really is what does a workflow know about information outside the workflow itself. The problem is that some of the obvious things you might think would help won't work. So a workflow instance doesn't know anything about any previous instance. So you don't get that persistence in uh, workflows. And by the way, workflows can't read from or write to disk files, at least not the built-in workflow functionality in dynamic CRM. So how might we do this? Well, it turns out that an instance of a workflow can read from and write to any parent record of the entity the workflow is written for. So for example, the familiar one-to-many relationship from account to contact means that a workflow running on contact can read from and write to parent record, in this case, account. So how does that help us on leads? Well, what we need is a parent record our lead workflow can use to figure out whose turn it is and the workflow will update it afterwards so the next sales rep gets the next lead. We'll use a custom entity. we we'll call it counter. Its only purpose is to sit there and have one attribute, an integer attribute, that'll keep track of whose turn it is. And the workflow will be written on lead, so the counter will be its parent, and that parent record will be able to be read by the workflow to figure out whose turn it is and be updated by the workflow after the lead is assigned to position the next person for the next lead. So let's jump into my demo environment and let me show you how this works. Okay, so let's take a look at my demo organization and see how this works. We'll look at the workflow in a minute, but first, let's look at my custom entity that has this parent relationship to lead. So, here's my counter records entity, and notice I've just got one record. It's all I need. I don't really do much with the name, but the counter attribute, this integer attribute that we see here, that one is the keeping track of things attribute that uh, will, will be read by the lead workflow and updated by it in turn. So I've got a one-to-many relationship from this custom entity to lead. Now let's go look at the workflow. Here's my lead assignment round robin workflow and it's in draft status now so we can make some changes to it and look at it. So I open this thing up and notice it's got a scope of organization so it will run for any lead that's created by anybody in my organization. It runs on the create event so it's an automatic workflow runs when every new lead record is created and here's what it does. So the very first action in this workflow is to update the lead record. You might wonder why I want to do this. So let's go look and see what the properties are that need to be updated. Remember I said that for this to work every lead record that I'm going to run this on needs to be a child record of that specific parent record. It's not enough just to have, to want, just to have a one-to-many relationship from counter to lead. I need my lead records to be child records of the counter. Now I don't want the counter lookup field to be on the lead form, so I'm going to go down here and notice on the additional fields tab in the workflow design environment, you'll see your lookup here. Now it takes a little bit of getting used to this. The first time I learned about this technique, I would think that you might use dynamic values for this, but in fact you don't. You want this to be hardwired. Every lead record should be a child of this specific record. So what I'm going to do here, coming in here for the first time, I'm going to not use dynamic values. I'm going to hardwire this so that every lead record is a child record of that specific counter. That's an, an important piece of this. It won't work if you don't take that step right there. Then, what have I got here? I've got a series of conditional blocks. And the first one says, if the counter is equal to 1, then... I'm going to assign this record to Richard. Now, how do I configure that? If I was coming in here for the first time, I would choose Add Step and choose a conditional branch to add. Once I add it, I need to specify what the condition is. And the condition is pretty straightforward to set once you understand this technique. I'll open it up, and I'm going to specify not a condition based on lead, but a condition based on a parent record of lead, and in particular, this is how I'm going to exploit the one-to-many relationship from counter to lead. So I can select counter, and then I get the fields in that parent record. So we'll choose from the counter entity, we'll choose the counter field, and I'll just specify if it equals 1, then 
we get the lead assignment to the first person in the line. Now, here's an important point here. At this point, I need to increment the counter so it's set up for the next time we run this. This is where the, you know, I've read the information from the counter. Now I have to write it back. So this line here, and I've got this update action, and what I want to update is this counter again. And what am I going to do? This time, I do want to use dynamic values. I'll position the cursor in the counter field, which is the field that we want to update. And instead of using set to as the operator, I'll want I'll use increment by, and I'm going to increment it by one. So there's how that useful increment by can be used here. So now I've got the counter incremented, and we go on to the next person. So if it's then two, Mary gets it. So depending upon how many sales reps you've got, how many people are participating in this lead assignment, that would determine the number of these conditional blocks. But Basically, each one is a repeat of the previous one. And now there's one of these that's going to be different, the last one, because by the time I get to the last person, for simplicity, I've just got three people participating in this round robin lead assignment. What I need to do is set the counter back to one so that it goes back to the, uh, the top of the stack, so to speak. So this very last one, this is just a simple hardwired update on the counter attribute of the counter entity. And I'll go in here and look at this, and this one's just hardwired to one, so no use of increment by here. And that's really all this thing needs to do. If I publish it, the workflow takes a status of published, goes to read only, and now it will run. So if I go to leads, and I'll create a few leads here, and we can see how this thing works. Doesn't look like I really did much yet because notice they're all still assigned to me, but that's just because the workflows hadn't run yet. So if I refresh this view, my open leads, notice now I only have one of the three that I just entered. So I've got Susie Main. Let's see what happened to the others. Let's go to all open leads. So let's look at leads one, lead two, and lead three, the ones that I just created. And notice I've added the owner as a column in this view so I can easily see how the round robin works. First to me, then to Mary, then to Jack. Now again, one of the reasons I like this technique is that it gives you a way to keep track of things across different instances of a workflow. The counter entity lets us know what the previous workflow did and we can go from there. Now, I can generalize this a little bit also. For example, suppose I add another record to the counter entity as I've done here and I've given it a name that suggests what it will do, in this case, opportunity counter record. I've created another custom one-to-many relationship, this one from counter to opportunity, and I can use that in an automatic workflow on opportunity to assign those records round robin. So let's look at my workflow on opportunity. There's my round robin. Now this workflow, the same basic structure, but the key thing here is to make sure and set each opportunity record that's going to participate in this as a child of the right record in the counter entity. See the first line in the workflow, this update action. Click on View Properties, and I'll go to Additional Fields again since that is not exposed on the form. But you can see here now opportunity records need to be attached to the other record, the one I added to the opportunity counter record, so to the counter entity. So this one, opportunity counter. So. I can have as many records as I want in that counter entity and as long as the records that are being assigned are attached to the right record in the parent entity, they can, uh, can have these workflows operate independently of each other. Another way you can tweak this is to change the business rules for assignments. You can see here that on my current not quite round robin opportunity assignment workflow, Mary gets two out of three of these records. Jack only gets one this time. Now, obviously, there are plenty of variations on this basic theme. Again, Richard Knudsen, signing off, and I hope you found this helpful.